Do you recruit here, your life applications officer? Um, I got into a debate today that happened by accident, and it was really a lot of fun. You know, a lot of friendly yelling back and forth. But what's sad about it is that the confusion of what tried to be my opponent. Um, it, again, it was fun, but I also feel very sad because there's so many Christians against Christians trying to do away with the term Christian or the term Christianity, but yet they feel that they can preach. God belongs to the Bible. The Bible belongs to Christians. God belongs to his people. This Bible was written for his people. Anyone that does not want to follow anybody from Adam to Paul to John the Revelator, you are not fit to try and argue or debate um, Christianity or the term Christian. Um, I, for one, know how Christianity, the term Christianity, gets thrown away, gets thrown around like, 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 like cheap beer, like cheap whiskey. Any old jump something, you know, uh, beer, you know, flavored beer with 1% alcohol ain't real beer, okay? Uh, you know, whiskey that don't have whiskey ingredients in, in it ain't whiskey, okay? Um, just any old jump, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, a soldier is not a soldier unless he's military, and you're not military unless you are a veteran of the United States and you went through the training and you went on your tours and you gained your medals and you came home safely or came home dead from fighting a good fight, okay? You ain't no soldier. You ain't no Marine. And I've met people lying about their stance in the service and so forth. But I'm just using that as an example. A Christian is a warrior in the army of the Lord. A Christian contends for the faith. As they say, from sea to shining sea, or on, on, on ground and beyond, or however they put it, it's a Christian the same way. We fight those that war against us and what we understand to be the truth. We also fight those that claim to be among us but, not, but are not really part of us. Okay? And I'm appalled at the level, the amount of Christians today that don't get it, but they want to argue doing this, trying to do circles around the Bible, trying to do circles around what Jesus might have meant, what he might have said. Well, what does it say? Read it. What does it say? Is it that difficult? No, it's not. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city 
and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down for it is written, for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you. And this is the way me and this man was arguing today. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him. It is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. The word of God applies to everybody. It applied to Jesus. It applied to his disciples. It, it applied to the prophets in the Bible. It applied all the way to Abraham, all the way to uh, Adam and Eve. The Old Testament is scripture, not just law, but scripture. The New Testament is not just scripture, but it is also the structure of the church. Where does Catholicism come in? It doesn't. Sure, Catholicism done a lot good for this country. It fought some wars and 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 you know there's a lot of catholic people that are good people but they're not christians because if you're christians you will dump your catholic church and come aboard to be a believer which this man was not he was not a believer in the complete word of God. He was a believer in bits and pieces. And then the rest, he's getting on his phone and he's looking up Constantine. And he's looking up all these other knuckleheads. Okay. And he's saying, yeah, but, but what is this and blah, 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 brother. Either you can accept the truth or you can't. Okay. If you got cancer, you have to accept it. That cancer could change your life. That cancer can cause your family to love you more because you got cancer. That family can cause your wife to come home and leave her other man because you got cancer. That cancer might cause your kids to obey you more because they don't need to be giving you stress when you got cancer. It hurts. The truth hurts. But it does help. Even if it sounds outrageously wrong in your human, you know, weak opinion. Truth is truth. Then Barabbas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. Antioch. This is where we get the Bible. We don't get the Bible from a hundred different places, hiding out in all these different caves of people that never loved God. They was practicing all kinds of evil religions. No, I don't think so. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. Who Saul? Paul. That's another argument we had. This man don't understand that the apostle Paul was the one in the Bible that never met Jesus except on the road to Damascus, which was more like a, a dream. It was more like a, uh, uh, you know, um, an earthquake or something. He didn't meet Jesus the way the disciples did. He didn't go to the empty tomb right after his crucifixion and find out that he wasn't there. There was no body. Paul didn't do that. Paul was a Christian like the rest of us that are Christians today. He never met Jesus except to believe in him. He met Jesus on the road to Damascus. You could call that a, a vision. You could call that... Um, you could call that a vision. You could call that um, a trance or whatever. The light came and hit him and he was blind. 
And when he received his sight, he was walking right with God then. Okay. And, and, and you might think, oh, here we go with the fairy tale. Hey, I meet people like that every day. There's people in prison that lost the arm or leg before they started believing in God. There's people out there pooping in a bag because of all the wrong things they've done in their life. And they're, and now that, that tragedy has caused them to walk right before God. Okay. Um, there's people on death row that are going to heaven because why every day of their life as they count down to the day of their death, they constantly worship and pray and study the Lord until their last dying breath. Yes, God will receive them unto himself. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church, the church, okay? This has nothing to do with Catholicism and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians. That's another argument we had. I ain't no Christian. If you ain't no Christian, what are you? If you ain't no Christian, why are we arguing? We don't need to argue. I don't argue with I don't argue with atheists. I do on online. I said you can go online arguing with me if you're gonna be an atheist. But if you are truly in God, you are a Christian, even if you don't like the term. You're a Christian. And a Christian is more than just a religion. It's not a religion at all. A Christian means members of the persecuted church. These are the people that were thrown to the lions in the name of Jesus for preaching the gospel, for believing in him and, 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 and refusing to bow down to the emperor at that time. Okay? Okay. And the disciples were first, who, who? The disciples, the 12. I said another video about this not too long ago. I, I asked the question, when did these prostitutes and sinners as so many homosexuals and so many atheists and so many people like my brother today mentioned this, that verse to me, where did they hang out with Jesus and Jesus didn't judge them for their sin. There was only 12 disciples. And the 12 disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. So it was for that whole year, they assembled with the church. That's another term for the word Christian. You don't want to call yourself Christian. You can say I'm a member of the way, a member of the church. I'm a member of the persecuted church. I'm a member of, I'm a disciple for Christ. That's fine, but you're still a Christian because the disciples were first called Christians first. That means they were called out more than once everywhere they went. As a persecuted church, they were called Christians they were first called Christians, however, in Antioch. Antioch is where we got the Texas Receptus. It's where we got our first manuscripts that made the Texas Receptus, and there's other texts that we call the Holy Bible today. The Texas Receptus is the right one, though. Okay, the Jehovah's Witness Bible is not Texas Receptus. The Mormon Bible is not Texas Receptus. See, it's all simple to me. Because I'm not hiding and I'm not trying to win, just merely win for the sake of winning. I know. And in these days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. 
So there was a lot of Christian activity going on in Antioch. But these people writing these modern day Bibles seemed to think that Antioch wasn't a big deal. They were called Christians at Antioch, and they began to, read, to write the scriptures in Antioch, the New Testament scriptures in Antioch. Or they began to hide them there, I should say. Okay? So, do you know how sick I am of hearing Christians hate on other Christians because they are pro-Bible. Well, if you're not pro-Bible, you're not a Christian. We don't practice Christianity, and this guy said that, threw that line in there too, which I felt was ignorant. We don't practice Christianity based on our own merit, based on our own choice to get something heard faster. Okay? But we are Christians because we have committed our mind, our heart, our body, our spirit, our belief system all to the master of the book. And that is Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Not our religion, because that's not really a religion. Our faith. Our faith. Okay. But Catholicism is not Christianity for the 150th last time. You can keep telling yourself that. But it's not. I think that's all I want to say. I think I got it all out. Um, if you want to know the Lord... All we can do is hold the door open for you. I'm holding the door open by sticking to the Texas Receptus. I'm holding the door open by making sure you understand what a Christian is. Too many Christians don't know what a Christian is. They think a Christian is a religious person. So, if I decide that I'm vegan, I guess that makes me religious. If I don't want to eat meat. If I decide that um, I only want to work daylight. I guess that makes me religious. I guess if I decide that I only wear black shoes, I don't wear colored shoes, that makes me religious. I'll take that. That's fine. But it really doesn't apply here. Okay. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. No man comes under the Father except through him. The Father God, that is. So everything about God is in Jesus. It's all in his death, burial, and resurrection. His ministry, death, burial, and resurrection. It's all in Jesus. Jesus is the second of the Godhead, the second of the Holy Trinity. I bet this guy don't believe in the Trinity either. But without the Trinity... That would take some authority away from who Jesus is. Okay, even though he did miracles that you and I will never do. I don't care how many tongues you can speak in or how many miracles you can perform from your hands. You'll never do it like Jesus did it. Because if he did, he wouldn't be the son of God. Okay. The only begotten son of God. But everybody... wants to do circles around the truth. Keep that to yourself. Don't bring don't bring a butter knife to a gunfight. Okay? Keep that mess to yourself. Because like this dude today, he didn't realize that I'm a veteran Christian. 
If I'm not a Christian, ain't nobody a Christian. And if it's wrong for me to be a Christian, then 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 I will go to hell and come back. Because the Lord has taught me better. And so has those that labored before me and among me have taught me better than that. Okay. God's word is alive, the Bible says, and active and sharper than any two-edged sword dividing heart and soul. I think it says. Okay. It is it is profitable for instruction and in righteousness. But then you got people like this guy who wants to be a Christian as it is convenient for him. Or he wants to be whatever he calls himself as convenient for him. He didn't even really mention where his faith lied. He didn't want to believe that anybody can really have faith. Oh, I want to put myself in there like that. Then shut up then. I'm pro-Bible. Okay, I am pro-Bible. I don't believe in anything outside the word of God that wants to try and republish or re or do, you know, re-specifications, if that's a word, on God. When this already has done specifications on God, this already tells you the attributes of God. We know who God is because of this. Beyond the fact that we know. That he exists. So that's good enough. I'm D-Roy Cruz, your life applications officer. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you got something out of this. If you want to follow the Lord, don't do it for your atheist buddies. Don't do it for your channel. Don't do it for your friends or your girlfriends. Do it for yourself. Because... Nobody's going to make a fool out of me by trying to argue with me about petty stuff that that does that does not line up with scripture. Okay. God bless you. Thank you for watching.